So this video is going to resolve the cliffhanger from our last video. We're going to actually explain why Tut's algorithm actually works. What we did in the last video was we showed that, well, you can at least compute a drawing which satisfies the spring condition, right? We showed that if you write down the linear system of equations, which describes all the forces on the interior vertices, that's a nice sub-Laplacian system. You can invert that sub-Laplacian. That gives you a solution. It tells you exactly where to put all the internal vertices. Great. Now what? So we still need to show that it's a good embedding, right? Like, in fact, we haven't even shown that it is an embedding. We wanted to show something even stronger, right? Not only is it an embedding, but it's one of these convex embeddings. Right, so that's what we want, convex embedding. And that means that every face is going to be a convex polygon. All right, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to show that this really does give you a convex embedding. All right. The key tool we're going to use is this idea of monotone paths. So this one, I think, makes most sense if you think of it purely in terms of physics. If I have an internal vert vertex, and I have a bunch of other edges coming out of it, and they're all springs. If they're all springs with the same spring constant, they're all pulling the same amount. Well, it has to be that if I look in any direction, I can move along one of those edges to increase my distance in that direction. Let me draw maybe in a picture. So let's say I pick a direction this way. Here's my direction. It doesn't matter what direction I pick. Then uh, whatever vertex I pick, and if I go, let's say, orthogonal to that direction, right, there's always some edges that will get me uh, more in that direction. I, should, I said edges, but it might just be one edge. There's at least one edge, like this, right? It can't be the case that I'm sitting here at a vertex and all the edges coming out are in this direction because the net force would pull it in. Okay, there is, of course, one exception to this. And that exception is at the boundary, right? So this vertex must be the, on the outer face. So that's one of our extreme vertices, right? So in any given direction, I can always uh, go from vertex to vertex in a path through the graph, through the drawing of the graph, so that I'm always moving monotonely in that direction. Okay, and we call these the monotone paths. So I, whenever I, I pick a vertex in a direction, I can always find a monotone path that will end at some extreme point, that is some uh, vertex of the outer face. Okay, and we're going to use these monotone paths a lot. And we're going to start with the first part, which is just to show that once you have these monotone paths, it's not too hard now to check that the faces in the drawing all have to be convex polygons. Now you might think that there's only one way for a polygon to not be convex. Right, that is maybe, if it's going to be non-convex, then it has to have some reflex vertex like this one. Right? A reflex vertex is one where, I guess if you're measuring, um, usually we measure the angles on the inside. If I measure on the inside, it's like more than 180 degrees. It's like bent backwards. That's a non-convex non polygon. If you have such a reflex vertex, uh, we'll show that, uh, in fact, the graph must not have been planar. Um, but I just want to warn you, that's not the only way to not be a convex face. You could consider this one where all the angles are less than 180 degrees and it just winds around two times, right? So if it has some kind of winding but no zigzags, then it will have to cross itself um, and that's going to be good enough. So let's do these two cases. Start with case one. If there's some zigzag, what I'll do is I'll just draw a line and I can always draw a line through a zigzag, right? That is where I had a convex vertex followed by a reflex vertex. And I'll draw this line so that it separates out these vertices. It goes A, B, let's say C, D, right? Where those are four vertices in order on the face and A and C are on one side of the line, B and D are on the other side of the line. So now I can use my monotone paths and what I'll do is I'll look in this direction. So for B, I can find a monotone path to the farthest point in that direction. And from D, I can also find uh, a monotone path out to that same farthest point. And in the other direction, I can also find monotone paths, right? I don't know where they'll go, but again, they'll end at the farthest point 
in this direction. And if that farthest point is not unique, you can uh, perturb this line by its small amount to make it unique. All right, so what have we done? We had a face, we had four vertices on the face, and we found two disjoint paths. If I were to take just this part of the graph, that is the, the face cycle and these paths, and what I get is a subgraph, which is uh, a subdivision of K4. Now, it's a subgraph of a planar graph, so it's a planar graph, it's a subdivision of K4, and A, B, C, and D are all on one of the faces. Okay, so just by taking a subgraph, I, I'm not going to make any faces smaller. Um, but that would mean that I have here an outer planar embedding of K4, which is not possible, right? K4 is not outer planar. Similarly, I'm going to do the same kind of trick by looking at the crossing. If there's a crossing because of a winding, I can again separate these out. Uh, let's label these A, B, C, D. And again, I can find monotone paths linking these two and these two. And that face, which I drew, well, now it is a face as part of a subgraph, which has, which is a subdivision of K4. And so you can't have all four vertices on uh, the same face of the K4 subdivision. Okay, so, so just by using monotone paths, we found these paths, which immediately give us contradictions to, this, uh, to the supposition that maybe uh, some face is not convex. Okay, so the, the conclusion here is then uh, all faces, look at that upside down A, uh, are convex. I'm just going to trust that you know how to read that. All right. So let's do another one. So there's a, another bad thing that could happen is that maybe the edges are, are con the faces are convex, but maybe I have an edge and I have both faces that are incident to that edge are on the same side as, of the edge. Okay, so if, I, if this happens, well, if I were to remove this edge, that would leave me with a new planar graph, which now has this, uh, which could be embedding with this, both of the, these faces glued together, it could be a single face. Well, if I, if I do that now, again, I've got a face with four vertices, A, B, C, D, and I can find monotone paths in this direction to link D and B and monotone paths in this direction to link A and C. So again, we find that this would be a subgraph of our planar graph, which, has, uh, which is a subdivision of K4. In fact, we could even just uh, contract those paths to single edges and we would have just K4, but there would be an embedding of it which had all four vertices on one face. And so again, since K4 is not outer planar, such a, a graph does not exist. And so again, this doesn't happen. And we again conclude that for each edge, there's one face incident to the edge on each side of the edge. This is gonna be really important for our grand finale here, which is where we're gonna show that this really is an embedding, okay? Whew. All right, so I blazed through those, those first two conditions real fast, but just remember, what did we learn? The faces are gonna be convex polygons and uh, at each edge, there's going to be one face on each side. So you can imagine now we have a little bit of a uh, jigsaw puzzle kind of problem. I've got these faces. I know they're going to glue together. And I want to check that after I glue them together, like at the edges, they, they look nice, that globally, they also look nice, that I don't get any crossings anywhere else. Okay, so here's the idea. Um, we're going to use something called the ply. I think this is kind of a neat idea. When you have the drawing and you've got your convex polygons sitting in the plane, you can ask for any point, how many polygons is that point inside? All right, so um, using that, uh, we take this, uh, this is the thing we wanna check, right? We wanna check that the ply should be one everywhere. That is every point in the plane is in just one polygon or it's on an edge. And, um, and that's going to imply that it's an embedding. So if you take any point, 
let's just take any point x uh, in the plane. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a path. So if you take a path from x, um, x to the outer face. And we're going to avoid vertices. Right, just to make it, make it simple. Now what happens is, is you take this path, so let's just imagine here are the edges laying out here. Here's x, and as I walk all the way out to the outer face, let's say somewhere out here at infinity, every time I cross an edge, I leave one polygon and enter another. Right, so the ply at every point stays constant. Right, so the ply is constant, but the ply here at infinity, once you get far enough out, the only face you're in is that outer face. And I guess I should be a little bit clear here when we talk about the, uh, all the faces being convex polygons, the outer face is just uh, the complement of a convex polygon. You might say that the outer face is, uh, can I call it inside out? Okay, the outer face is everything but a poly, uh, one convex polygon. But once you get far enough away, you're going to be certainly outside of all the other polygons. So the ply there um, at infinity is just one. And since along the whole path, you never changed ply, right? The only possible time you could change is when you left a polygon or entered a polygon at an edge. But we already saw that at every edge, you have exactly um, just those two faces meeting. So, uh, which implies then that the ply at x was one, and we didn't make any assumptions about where x was. So in fact, the ply is one everywhere. All right, so that is how you show that this is an embedding. In a way, what we did was really to show that there's some kind of mapping, which is not just from the graph or the geometric realization of the graph into the plane, but some kind of geometric realization of uh, this whole collection of polygons into the plane. And then you show that it can't uh, kind of fold over itself in this way. And so Tut's algorithm gives us a nice convex embedding of a planar graph. And it does so uh, in a way that's algorithmically quite nice. Just solve one system of linear equations to do it. And uh, we get to use some of our cool knowledge about how what kinds of graphs could be planar or outer planar in order to, um, to show that this really does give a good embedding. All right. So we're going to use this at some point soon, uh, starting next week, to, um, to prove one of my other favorite theorems, which is Steinitz's theorem. But first, we'll have to go through orientations and Maxwell-Cremona, so stay tuned for that.